He is State Senator Joe Pittman joining us in the studio this morning. Good morning. Todd, good morning. It's good to have you back with us here today. Um, House goes into session next week, Senate the week after that. Yes, the 23rd. Yeah, we're Gearing it up, aren't you? Yeah, we are. We're, we're gearing it up. It's uh, going to be, a, a, I think, a difficult fall session in, in a lot of ways. I, you know, I'm, one of my assignments is to be a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Mm-hmm. I'm not a lawyer, and so it's foreign territory to me. But yeah. the chair of the committee has set two days of hearings to discuss the issues related to gun violence um, and violence in general. Mm-hmm. And I just heard your report here about the active shooter situation in Jefferson County. And so I'm not sure where we go, to be honest, Todd. This is such a a complex issue. It has so many factors. I strongly believe in the Second Amendment, and I strongly believe that a firearm is an inanimate object unless a human being uses it. Mm -hmm. And I also recognize that Assault weapons can take many forms. You know, you've probably heard Senator White talk a lot about the stabbings that occurred in Franklin Regional four or five years yeah. ago. I, I was with the senator the day that it happened whenever he traveled out from Harrisburg to see the crime scene. And it was a very sobering and difficult experience. Uh, but, you know, that devastation was it occurred with two kitchen knives, standard kitchen knives. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it goes back to the human intent, the human element of this. And I'm not sure what law we can ever pass to prevent evil intent. And that's, that's a real hard one. It's going to be a hard discussion in Harrisburg. You can see the difficult discussions that we're having in Washington, D.C. about it as well. But this is just not this is just not normal human behavior and it just seems and i don't know if it's just our ability to to discuss it more with the advent of social media and 24 7 news or what but you know my family we went to mass last saturday evening and our father allen at the end of mass talked to us about the active shooter training that we have undergone as a congregation Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I just to have to sit there and listen to that dialogue and to have our kids sitting there hearing that dialogue, you know, it's painful. It's painful. It really is. And I just it's really upsetting and disturbing to me. And it's just a new reality that I'm I'm not happy about. Well, you sitting on the Judiciary Committee will get a chance to hear things uh, from a number of different perspectives. One of the things that I note in all of these discussions is, I don't know if the the word would be necessity, uh, but certainly um, there is a need for taking the emotion out of it in order to get something done. I think sometimes our emotions get the best of us on either side of the argument, Mm -hmm. and, and so nothing constructive gets done because when one emotional side gets up against another emotional side, it becomes a shouting match and, uh, and people just trying to force their way through. Actually getting something constructive done becomes more difficult then. It, it is, and, and I, you know, I really do believe a lot of this starts at home. I look at, again, my family, my boys, they, they love their Xbox and they like to play video games and they like to watch movies and you know, in the new reality of violence and human life, I mean, they, they you know, on a video game, you, you, you kill people and you press a button and they're back. Yeah. You know, it's got, and it's gotten so real and it's gotten so violent. And it just, at those ages, it, it inundates them with this stuff. There's and, no value and, placed on it. Right. And then you get into the issues of cyberbullying and, in the things that the kids have to go through this day and age, you know, and I, you know, I always heard that, you know, my parents always told me when I was growing up that, you know, it was a lot easier back then. And I always kind of chuckled at them. But now I look at this and I think about how much easier it was back then. Yeah. And we've just inundated our society with, with, with 
violence and negative feelings and it's just i i just don't know where to go with it yeah well these discussions maybe can provide some direction i hope and, i hope and, uh, and i don't know if you would call it the opening of the dialogue within pennsylvania's general assembly but certainly it's a furtherance of of discussions that need to be had and the thing about laws is laws can be great and they can have great intent but unless you're enforcing them uh, and a hundred percent enforcement is required in this case. That's exactly right. I mean, one of the recent articles was about how the background check system was failing, and that there were individuals that purchased that shouldn't have. But it was a matter of law enforcement talking, not talking to other law enforcement that allowed them to make the purchase. And the other thing is, you know, evil intent doesn't care about the law. I mean, if it if they cared about the law, we wouldn't have the problems we have. I mean, it is illegal to murder. A human being. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, murder is illegal. Obviously, that's not stopping people from murdering. Yeah. Um, and so I think w- we have a deep societal issue here that really, really goes well beyond any law. Yeah. If they want a gun, they're going to get their hands on a gun. All we have to do is look at the police reports, the number of guns that are stolen out of unlocked vehicles, which makes no sense to well, us. Well, look at the stabbings that are occurring in the city of Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Yeah, there's another thing. Yeah. All right, so that's a difficult discussion that is going to be taking place once the new session starts. Um, mm-hmm. On another entirely different note, uh, you recently hosted the broadband hearing mm-hmm. out at Blue Spruce Park, mm-hmm. and um, there might be actual some movement uh, here within Indiana County. Yeah, I you know I mentioned in our last conversation that we have some opportunities here. And I pointed to the hotel tax revenue, the impact tax revenue the county receives, the grant that Senator White had received. And I'm just not a believer that the answers are in Harrisburg. I I, I don't think we can sit around and wait for this potential of restore PA that's been spent three times already over. We've got to start looking here at home what we can do in the immediate future. And so Representative Struzzi and I met with the county commissioners just last week, and the county set aside some dollars out of their impact tax money. And we think, for example, the hearing was held at Blue Spruce Park for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And without getting into a lot of detail, I think there's a path forward to addressing the issue at Blue Spruce Park, doing it locally and doing it for what is tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, there's, There's a way to do this. And I'm hoping over the next couple months you're going to be hearing about it. But those are the types of things where we've just got to keep putting the pieces of the puzzle together and try to address this one step at a time. And also manage public expectations to understand that cell service broadband access are two different animals. And the objective of Blue Spruce is to give people basic access to communicate when necessary. And that's what I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to do. The other thing that happened in Harrisburg is that the Public Utility Commission has begun to take responsibility for the permitting of poles to attach wires. Okay. And what I mean by that is that you know the utility poles are owned by somebody, whether it's REA or Verizon or Penelac or whatever entity. And if somebody else wants to use that pole, they have to get a permit and they have to pay a fee. And that can take a lot of time, and it costs a lot of money. I mean, we received testimony that some utilities are requiring an $8,000 per pole permit fee. Yeah. So it makes it infeasible. <laughs> so I was glad to see the PUC take the step of trying to put together a process where they can resolve disputes over permitting and try to expedite it and make it more feasible. And so I think that's an important step. They passed those initial regulations last month, and I think in a few months that will be up and running. My hope is, though, whatever they do, they do it quickly. Senator yeah. Joe Pittman with us this morning for a few more minutes. Um, yeah. The rest of the session in Harrisburg, there's going to be much talk about property taxes. Yes. Um, and uh, House Bill 76 and the Senate Bill 76 are going to be reintroduced. Are they substantially different, as you've read them so far, than uh, what has been debated before? Not substantially different, but you are hearing about other proposals out there, particularly one proposed by uh, Representative Ryan, I believe, that would implement a tax on retirement income. Yeah, we had him on the air with that one. That's a a difficult road to go down. It is a difficult road to go down, and neither Senate Bill 76 or House Bill 76 have retirement income in it. But that illustrates the challenge of property tax elimination, and I 
you know, I'm usually a person that accepts the fact that there has to be compromise. But when it comes to property taxes, my view is that the school property tax, the only solution is elimination. If we reduce it and raise other taxes, we're going to have the property tax right back to where it was and we're paying the other, the other tax. So mm -hmm. my view is we either eliminate it or we move on. It underscores the challenge of how much revenue we have to generate to eliminate it. And every year that goes by that school districts raise property taxes, it makes that challenge that much higher. So w right now, Senate Bill 76 does not have 26 votes. Mm -hmm. We're probably at 21, 22. Um, I'm a yes. I will support it because I fundamentally believe the property tax is archaic and it needs to go away, particularly on the homestead. But absent that, one of the things I'm looking at very seriously is a dollar one referendum. And what I mean by that is the state of Ohio requires that any property tax increase be approved by the voters, okay. no matter how much it is. And I'm increasingly of the mind that perhaps the voters need to be empowered with that ability mm -hmm. if we're not going to get to the elimination. So that's a, a plan B that I'm starting to float out there. I've not introduced anything yet. I'm still evaluating it. But to me, that's that's another option. There's some hard work coming in Harrisburg yeah. in the next three months, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> but, hey, that's it's good work. I've enjoyed the three months here at home. I've enjoyed attending the fairs. I have my first town hall meeting next Wednesday evening in Saxonburg in Butler County. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start having those on a regular basis throughout the district. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to be at home. We need to hear what the constituents have to say. The more time you spend in Harrisburg, the more time you spend in D.C., the more you lose touch with reality. And mm -hmm. we need to be concerned about what real people are concerned about. Town hall schedule include Indiana anytime soon? Not anytime soon. Um, I want to get through Butler County and Westmoreland County. Okay. <laughs> so this is part of, <clears throat> you know, we have a district office right here in Indiana. SenatorPittman.com is my website. The phone number there is 724 Three five seven zero one five one. We're not able to provide that kind of service to all of the counties, and so Butler County, in particular, I want to establish a, a series of town hall meetings and then work my way in, yeah. as they say. All so. right. Well, you've got another week before you're back there in Harrisburg, and who knows what happens between now and then. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you, Todd. The Cookport Fair is happening. That's my home fair, and so I got to <laughs> give a plug for that. I knew we couldn't get out of here without that. Yeah.